Allow me to preface this episode of No Driving Gloves. We are experimenting with streaming to our Facebook and YouTube channels. This was the first attempt that we actually streamed live with no buffers, no editing, no time delays. So we hope you enjoy this episode. I did not go back and edit anything, so it exactly reflects what we said on YouTube and Facebook. This may or may not be how we continue in the future. Again, we are experimenting with the live streaming aspect of the podcast. Some of our listeners have asked for it. Give us some feedback. Let us know if you just like this raw, uncut stuff. Let us know if you like the streaming. Check it all out. But right now... No driving gloves. We're a combination of gearheads. John, the instigator. Derek, the conservator. Will, the builder. Sean, the racer. And maybe a guest. Invite you to listen while they sit down, have a drink, and discuss cars. More subscribe to the podcast No Driving Gloves. Time now for the ride. We're trying something new tonight. It is uh, streaming with No Driving Gloves. I'm going to click a button. Uh, Mr. Yoder's finally joining us for the first time this year. And of course, Typical Mr. Yoder, he arrived just as the last beat of the drum. You hear him crunching away. <laughs> we're good to go. If you're watching us on the YouTube where we're test streaming this, um, you know who's here. But if not, who's here? Give Yoda. Let him go first since he hasn't been here all damn year. I think he's still chomping on like pimples or something. I'm not. I'm just marveling at Will's beard. <laughs> like that, baby. I'm just. I'm. He was giving I, us close-up shots earlier. I have a start. Kind, kind of reminded me of things from the past. But what have you got going on there? It looks like uh, if if it was reversed, it would be a mullet. It's 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 my wizard starter kit. I was gonna say he might be he might be known as Yoda, but I'm I'm getting a Gandalf vibe here. A little Gandalfy, a little Gandalfy. It needs to be longer though, and and it was much more full, and then I decided to cut it a little bit, and it it got a little wonky on me. I'm not happy with it right now, but it'll grow. Back you, I would be happy you, with that. Can you just do the do the Fu Manchu and just sit here and kind of. Well, that was the idea. Was like, like it goes all white, and then it's uh, what was the character in the Quentin Tarantino, the Kill Bill movies? Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I was thinking of, but I can't her, remember. Yeah, her her sensei with the flicking the the beard. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna stop now. Nice to see y'all. <laughs> Hi. Oh, there we go. Hello, I'm I'm doing my producer activities over here off to the side. So, so yeah, over. Oh, hang on, the camera's reversed. Over there is Yoda. Up there is Will Posey of Big Oak Garage. I got to figure this camera thing out. Hang on, guys. Over <laughs> there is John, and I'm Derek. It it says our names there. There. Well, I know, it does. but you know, I mean, yeah. people listen. They never see our faces, so. We could have pulled a prank on them and each typed somebody else's name in and screen and nobody would know whether we did that or not. That'd be cool. I feel very Brady Bunch. Do y'all feel very Brady Bunch with this layout? Not enough squares. I'm yeah. like, well, it's it's like a, it's like my beard. It's a Brady Bunch starter kit. We need well, we, we need Alice right there. Right. Right in the middle. We just have the um the men from the Brady Bunch here. And just the question is who's Mike? Uh, I'm going to say John looks the most liking. Yeah, he definitely has the most hair. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm going to call it a COVID cut. <laughs> Me too. Wait, do we all have our masks? We should probably have our masks on just in the spirit of uh, COVID. Uh, I'm not away. I don't think I have one anymore. <laughs> That's nice. That's very nice. You, you, Jeremy. Jeremy Jeremy's. Who is the doctor in Futurama? The uh, the doctor the, in Futurama. The lobster character in Futurama. That's kind of what you look like with the glove. I can't remember the doctor, but I wa I sat down the other day. I haven't watched Futurama in ten years, probably. 
Now, I was at the cigar shop before my shift. I popped down. I go, well, I'm just going to watch something funny. And it was the damn episode where Fry's dog, it, they found like a statue or a replica of Fry's dog. And at the end, he goes, well, he long forgot about me, et cetera, et cetera. And then they showed the dog just sitting there outside the pizza parlor, withering away to nothing, waiting for Fry to come back. So Did you cry? I'm, Did you doing, cry? I'm, I'm doing that to make everybody out there sad since I had to sit through the sadness. It brought, a tear, it brought a tear to my eye. Also reminded me I have yet to watch um, um, How to Race in the Rain with Patrick Dempsey. So. <laughs> They tried that last weekend in Texas. That didn't work too well. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me don't get me started on that. I don't know what you mean, Will. <laughs> Not that I watch a lot of NASCAR, but that was pretty funny. Just drive the damn car. That's where I'm at on that. Yeah. How can you drive when you can't see you couldn't even watch it on TV? You couldn't even see nothing on TV. Just go look at any picture from any open wheel race in the rain and it's that's magnified times a hundred and they still seem to make it happen yeah, i've yet to see a racing helmet with windshield wipers on it so, it's a good idea. so what if their cars didn't have windshield wipers if you go fast enough the water blows off it's true what it's about, true what about the spray from the car in front of you where you can't see don't be in don't don't be behind the car directly in front of you. Get out of the the get out of the racing line. If you That's have what you have to do. Okay, what if there's three cars in front of you? You're really losing. Back off. You should <laughs> then be why are you there? But the whole point is to win the race. Then you shouldn't be you being behind them getting any then, spray. Exactly. Let's mm-hmm. let's get back to Nikki Lauda. Nikki Lauda said something to the effect of if you want to win a race in the rain, be out front. Well let's be yeah. out be out front. You got to be the number one qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. Pit road. Sure. I mean, it's, it's racing in the rain is a different deal, man. It's a totally different deal, but it is a lot of fun. It's a ton of fun. Um, but the whole following, you know, three feet off the bumper or directly on the bumper of the car in front of you, doesn't matter whether it's a stock car or an open wheel car or whatever it is. You can't do that in the rain. You just can't do it. It doesn't work. Uh, drove me crazy, man. Hearing everybody whining about it, I'm like, my God, y'all, just drive the damn car. See, and this is probably a nice thing to have uh, the live stream because we're talking about something, and if you're actually watching the live stream, we're talking about it a couple of days later as opposed to a week or two weeks or whenever the hell the uh, editor decides to get these podcasts released. That's one reason we might move to this uh, live stream because the editing will be a lot less. Derek's been quiet in the corner. What you been up to, Derek? Being quiet in the corner. <laughs> you didn't watch any of that NASCAR yeah. stuff, did you? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. I don't watch a lot of racing. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to break your heart there, uh, Sean. I just don't do it. I didn't watch the NASCAR race. I just heard all, all right. the backlash. The, the only reason I've seen anything about the NASCAR race was I tuned in to watch my, my good friend Clay Milliken. Uh, at the NHRA race in, in Houston. And they, I guess they were delayed a little bit and they were showing some stuff about the NASCAR race. So that's, that's the only reason I know anything about it. I talked about clay yesterday at the cigar shop because we got talking about, uh, there was drag racing on and the, they were spouting all kinds of false information. Like they <laughs> run, run 1320 feet in a quarter mile. And I know they don't run a quarter mile anymore. And, I know how much does it cost? Does you know what do you think that costs? Is it five or six thousand dollars a run for uh, top fuel? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, don't, why don't why don't we get Clay Milliken on here and ask him about it? Absolutely. I mean, what is what does a top fuel pass cost these days? Is it is it fifty six? Okay. It's like fifty okay. sixty grand, isn't it, or more? It's a hundred grand a run, I think. Is it a hundred grand a pass? Good lord! But. Uh, Let's, if we can get Clay back, I don't know if we'll talk to him about the financials of racing, but when we sat down with him, it was a great hour, but awesome unfor- unfortunately, we had a new piece of equipment and something somewhere screwed up and it is completely unrecoverable. I've even sent it to three other editors and 
I'll, there's, uh, there's no saving it. I'll, if, I'll, you guys, I'll, if you guys want to listen to the interview in a horrible, horrible <laughs> audio, I will put it out. Mm-hmm. Send, you know, send me an email. If I get enough yeses, hey, we're going to, you know, you guys are fabulous enough. It's Clay's in that's bad. Uh, you know, Will and I sound great, but of course we always sound great. Well, that's a stretch. <laughs> he said we sound great. We don't look great. Ah, yeah. Well, that's why I'm not sure we're going <clears> to <throat> do better with this live streaming. I think we might actually lose uh, listeners slash viewers. People love, you. people love a train wreck, man. That's, that's true. true. We could, that's you know what? We could true. become the next viral sensation. That's you know? very true. <laughs> Is that like uh, that will be the next coronavirus? Could be. Never know. <laughs> Maybe that was it. Some some group of atoms just wanted to get together and have a viral thing, and they misunderstood what they were supposed to do. <laughs> that explains the whole last year. So I don't even I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> so I'm I, thinking about just I'm thinking about just walking off and going working on my car some more. <clears throat> well, that's one thing you've got to do anymore is be able to work on your cars if. Uh, the press is right out there, is it not? I've been in the market for something recently, and <laughs> I went by uh, the local Ford dealer because we all know I love Fords, and they, the Apple CarPlay seems to work properly with uh, podcasts and ways and everything. But uh, they had like eight pickup trucks on the lot, and this is a dealer that normally has like 80 pickup trucks on the lot. And... Well, I don't know if I'm in the market for a pickup truck. I need something that tows more than a Ford Fusion. No. Has more towing capacity than a Ford Fusion. Um, and somebody's telling me that there's a whole bunch of uh, F-250s sitting at some stadium in Kentucky that will yeah, be shipped yeah. to the dealers to have ECUs installed at the dealers. Mm-hmm. Have any of you guys noticed or heard, or have you all just been into your crypto? I've been I've been uh, looking and finally found something, um, but yeah, it's <laughs> the the car market, new or used, is weird right now. I like weird in a, in a way that I have never. And I, I have any of y'all seen? I, I don't remember anything like this ever happening before. Inventories on new car lot, like new car lots right now. There's, there's, uh, we just bought a Pacifica. We bought a pre end Pacifica, and it took months to find that. And I kind of stopped looking three or four times. And every once in a while, I just pop into Auto Tempest or a couple other sites and look around. And last week, one just happened to pop up, and I was like, oh, holy crap, that might actually work. But even because of this chip thing and because the new car inventories are so low, the used car pricing has gone through the roof and it helped on our trade in exponentially. But we also paid, you know, a couple grand more for the for the Pacifica than we would have paid eight months ago. Yeah, but, I mean that's the math I don't understand is, oh, wow, I get so much more for my trade. Oh, wow, I'm paying so much more for my car. <laughs> I still need a car. It's kind of yeah. like the housing market's great right now, too. You can get an extra 50 grand for your house, but when you move, you're going to spend another 50 grand. So I had that conversation today with a friend of mine who was like, "I, they're, we're thinking about putting our house on the market. People are actually offering us offering to buy our house right now and it's not even listed like every everybody wants our house it's like that's true you're you're absolutely right have you priced houses because you're gonna need another place to live and it's no different with driving i mean it, it yeah it, it blew my mind what they gave us for the toyota that we traded um it was probably four grand more than it would have been seven or eight months ago and I mean, we traded the 2018 model Toyota CHR in that had almost 90,000 miles on it. And they gave us high teens for it. And it was a $24,000 car new. 
I got a buddy who paid just over 17 for his Toyota Camry uh, in 2012. They're giving him 11, well, 11, eight for it on trade. You know, it's crazy. 11, you know, a 10 year old car effectively. Um, and he, he's buying something used, but it's, you know, I'm, I really wish I could walk to work. It'd be the time to <laughs> unload. <laughs> right. Walk so to work for about question. a year. Here's the question, Sean, how, uh, how much more did you pay for the Pacifica? Like, I mean, like we were just talking about, but honestly, example wise, I mean, did you pay about four to five grand more Actually, than you would have about a year ago on that Pacifica? About two to three. But I, I, we did okay. I mean, I, I think we did okay. Um, I, it was about two to three more than than the ones than similar models that we were looking at a year ago. I mean, we've been off and on looking at Pacificas for a couple of years now. And it, it was higher, but it wasn't. It wasn't as high as the what they hit our Toyota with, and it was ACV on the Toyota. It wasn't just a wasn't a shown. You know, it wasn't a, a trade in in relation to what we were buying the other vehicle for, kind of thing. It was ACV versus ACV is what we were looking at, and it. Uh, I'd say they hit the Toyota about four grand high and we got the Pacifica 2,500 to three grand higher than we would have bought it for eight to 12 months ago. So it, it was a wash. I mean, in the grand scheme, it was a wash, I think. And it's a vehicle that we've been wanting for, well, I'm, let me rephrase that because if Natasha watches this, she's going to correct me on this. It's a vehicle I've been wanting for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, it's just so comfortable and it makes so much sense. And, you know, we had the little CHR and you could throw a little bit of stuff in the back of it, but it's a CVT transmission. And that was really the biggest reason why we were looking to, to I was looking to get rid of it anyway, is I wanted to be able to tow because we have an eight foot trailer that I'm turning into a mini mobile lab for, for Nemesis, be able to put the simulator in it. And I can tow that behind this, behind this Pacifica, but leaving Barber on Sunday, I had to back into that van loaded up, man. And I can't even begin to express my joy at how easy it was to open up both side doors and the back of that thing and just start chucking stuff in it. And we had seven times more stuff in it than we ever had in the Toyota and everything was in there all nice and neat and nothing was laying on top of each other trying to, you know, bust up my electronic equipment and stuff it's it, minivans i know a lot of people still poo poo them and no one wants the soccer van and all that stuff but my god they're epic i mean they're just they're the most utilitarian vehicle you can possibly buy i know i have at least one other proponent here on the show with with me right now i, I think i have two that are against it will shaking his head <laughs> let's hot rod it will come on man let's let's do some body work to it let's play right. come on no. <laughs> No, Come I know on, some guys, I know some guys down the road that probably take it in, but not me. I got Come I got on. two years worth of cool shit waiting on me. Mini minivans can be cool. Mini minivans can be cool. They can. No. Oh, we all know I love my vans, and I was thinking a couple of weeks ago, their local Ford dealer, because I love Fords, had a Transit Connect XLT trim, thirty. Two thousand dollar van, thirty three thousand dollar van. Sticker price had three thousand miles on it. It was a dealer demo thing, and same dealer I bought my Fusion from actually. And they had the thing priced at twenty one nine as a kind of a thing. And I said, no, uh, no, 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 I don't want it. And then I got thinking, and I said to myself one night, I said, I'm going to check and see if it's on. I think it was a Saturday night. I looked to see if it was still on the site, and I said, I'll go Monday. And get it. And it was still there Saturday night. And then I got up Sunday and I went to check something about it and it was gone. So it must have sold that Saturday. And the thing with that van is, and it was a people, so it had the seats in it and everything. It wasn't a cargo van like my last one. I cannot find a Transit Connect. I don't care if it's cargo or passenger uh, in built between 2017 and 2021 for less than twenty six dollars or $27,000. And we're talking fifty or sixty thousand miles on them. 
hella 2000 or 2014, which is the same body style, 115, 130,000 miles. Those are 15,000, $16,000 vans all day long. And I just, I don't understand it. You know, a pickup truck with 140,000 miles is a sticker price, you know, used with. Uh oh. Uh oh. John just fell asleep. Yep, it happens. There he is. He's back. Oh, Yay. He's yeah, I don't is understand. He though? <laughs> Boy, the show got so much better there for a few seconds. <laughs> Our viewership went up. It doubled. It I, I know. Well, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you guys missed or whatnot. I, I mean, I'm, my internet. I don't know. Are, you, were, you were talking about transit connects. Nobody was listening. It, exactly. It was. The no, I got, I got into the pickup trucks. Have it. Derek, you bought a pickup truck last year. Wait, uh, wait, you're getting a new lightning. Is that what you said? Um, for 40 grand, uh, it's tempting to really look at that. You think you'll really be able to buy one of those for 40 grand? Nope. I don't either. <laughs> the, the no dealer will order them spec that way. Right. But I mean, damn, the thing will run your house for three days if you use it as a generator. I mean, it's, I, 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 I love the whole thing about the lightning a few days ago and Every, I think I've mentioned once or twice, I like the new Hummer. Those those are electric vehicles that are going to change, I think, the landscape and the thought process of electric vehicles. Um, they're showing us what we're capable of with electric vehicles. You know, and the Mustang Mach-E, as much as we hate the name, and the Ford Lightning is causing Ford to invest in the infrastructure to support those vehicles, much like Tesla has. and we wouldn't be there without Tesla, but uh, and Tesla's kind of last year's tech anymore. Tesla and just announced a partnership with Toyota, though, and if that actually comes to pass, that's that's a big deal. That's really a big deal. I got a question about all these EV vehicles. I, I don't research it. I know nothing about them. I did have a Tesla in the shop the other day to put some stickers on it, but that's about, that's about all I've done. Um, you made it go faster with stickers. We did. We we added about forty horsepower to it with stickers. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, as far as the plugs for these things, are they all the same? Do they does does Tesla share the same plug as GM and Ford and and everybody else? Yes. No. Nope. No, they don't. Yeah, that was. You can get an maybe. adapter. Yeah, but like, yeah. like you go to a hotel, they're they're gonna yeah. have to eventually. But yeah. right now, uh, they don't. And like Sean said, I think there's an adapter out there. Yeah, but there, there's pretty much a universal plug that everybody has agreed to do. Uh, much like your cell phones, you know, everything's going USB C because the EU mandated it, so we don't have 18 different styles of cell phone chargers anymore. Um, the, the EVs, some of them do have a proprietary plug, but they all have some sort of adapter. I mean, you can plug them all into a 110 outlet. You can plug all of them into a 240 outlet in some way, shape or form. And they all come with a cable. So yeah, but you, you can't pull a, you can't pull right. a Porsche Taycan up to a Tesla supercharger right, that's and actually I, use the supercharger functionality. That, to, to yeah. That's what, that's what I'm asking. I mean, cause you go to, you go to these you know, a lot of hotels that are right off the interstate and, and Walmarts and, you know, stores like that that have these EV chargers. I mean, how do you know if your car is actually going to charge with that deal or not? You got to have the adapter. I mean, it's and most people that have an EV that, that are going to drive an EV for any extended trip have done the research and, and gotten the adapter, the adapter or adapters that they need in order to hit the stations that they're going to need to continue that journey. But it it's like, if, like I said, if you have a Mach E and you pull up and there's a Tesla supercharger, you can use your adapter and actually use the Tesla charger, but it's on a much lower rate of charge than the actual supercharger. So you it'd be like hours to charge versus hour to charge kind of thing. It's, it's I don't just, believe, yeah, it's I don't weird. believe Tesla allows non Tesla 
vehicles Did it not? The superchargers. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's no, the, because the you the, the whole instance you said is if all of a sudden you owned a Tesla you paid 130 grand for, and you pull up to there's a another super, car supercharger yeah. station and there's 10 Mach E's there trickle charging, you can be a little upset. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably true. Um, you know, it's, they're going to figure you know, out a lot of this. I mean, the new new Lightning, I hope they make a sport truck version of it. It would be phenomenal as a f- sport truck version. Let's forget mm-hmm. that, you know, plug in all my DeWalt power tools and the towing capacity of 10,000 pounds. And uh, from what I understand, when they say the thing has a 300-mile range, they did their range studies and their EPA testing with 1,000 pounds of payload in the bed. So it's not even like they tried to fake the numbers they tried to put it in real world conditions and and it's supposed to charge itself i think on 240 at the house from virtually like 20 percent to uh 90 percent overnight so if you are a contractor who's using it on a job site and using the 110 capabilities of it for your power tools and that it's supposed to be a perfectly usable vehicle God only knows what the range is when you put 10,000 pounds in the trailer behind you and, and you try to drag it down the road. You might be stopping every 75 miles, but it's a start. I'll tell you what, the the, the looks of the new Lightning is pretty good, pretty good looking. I hate to, I hate to admit it. But you like it's, it better than styling. the Cybertruck? It is. It, it's, got a, it's got a good look. It's a little edgy, but it's not too far over the edge. Uh, I, Yeah. I, I'm. I would not go buy one, but I do like the way it looks. I would like to see one up close and touch it and feel it and sit in it and you know look at it really close. But you wanna okay, rub okay, it, okay, and okay. That's, it enough. And hug it That's and enough. That's enough. That's enough. And call it George. <laughs> so no, it's I, I actually you know uh, one of the cool things or interesting things about uh, you know at the Corvette Museum is. There's a, a group called Electrify America that's been going through putting in charging stations. And uh, so we have a four bay charging station at the museum. And uh, it's been kind of cool seeing the cars recently that have been pulling up. I've seen two Mach E's at the charging station. Um, one of the Porsches rolled in the other day. Um, you know, your typical you know, Teslas are there every now and then. Uh, but it, it's, to me, it's getting very interesting to see more use of that equipment because when it first went in, we didn't really see that much, maybe one or two Tesla here and there. And now, I mean, almost every day there's a car, at least one car out there charging, be it a, a Mach-E, a Porsche, a Tesla, whatever, uh, which again, you know, as, as we keep talking about, it's it's the way things are heading and that's very clear year after year after year you see increasing usage of these charging stations and increasing installation of them as an infrastructure like gas stations and uh, then you get things like the the lightning coming out i'm, I'm actually kind of pumped I'm, I'm waiting to see a lightning at the uh, um, charging station because i'll go uh, i'll go uh, uh, feel it for will hell yeah so I, mean, I, have some, I you know, go ahead. I know, I know. We were talking. We we always seem to get on this EV crap. I'm going to change it back to. Hey, uh, you brought it up. I didn't bring it up. Maybe I did bring it up about. <laughs> no, they started talking about that Mustang Mach E crap, and then that just triggered my question. Oh, anyway, whatever. That's the reason we went off on the EV tangent. Um, but back back to the lack of cars that are out there. Um, I follow the you know National Corvette Museums, all of their social media. It's awesome, by the way. Um, and man, they're giving away. People are picking up their Corvettes like it's crazy. And it to me, it doesn't look like the Corvette are slowing down at all. It's like man, every time I go out, I, I see a new Corvette on the road. So then, then things are, are flying off. I mean, well, is, is that fortunately, that, is that something that y'all see on a daily basis at the museum? And that's just oh the yeah. one people are picking up there. Right, right, right. I mean, yeah, fortunately, GM had 
sub stock and uh, you know a supply of of the computer necessary computer components they uh, were that were required to build the cars, but the plant right now is not producing. They're on a shutdown because they're waiting on some parts. Um, but yeah, I mean Corvettes are sold out. I mean flat out Corvettes are sold out for this year and 2022 orders are going to be opening up and you know they're going to sell out pretty fast because and i know there's a lot of uh corvette folks out there that are not big fans of the c8 yet the mid-engine corvette but uh, gm hit it on the head i mean or they hit the nail on the head and yeah moving to the mid-engine platform going after you know porsche uh ferrari all those groups, you know, other companies they're going after. It's been a long awaited car. And like I say, yeah, you have some naysayers that, you know, Corvette should be a front engine sports car, but I will, I, I mean, and we've talked about, we talk about it at work all the time. The, the changing demographic that we see picking up the C8 Corvette at the museum is incredible. Uh, I mean, you'll walk out there one day and we have typically eight Corvettes lining the the front boulevard there where you walk in the main entrance and they're all there that day for delivery to their new owner. And I'll walk out there and there'll be your typical, you know, and, and I hate to stereotype like this, but, you know, your typical older couple picking up their Corvette, you know, maybe in their 60s or 70s you know, close to retirement age, the guys always wanted a Corvette or the gals always wanted a Corvette and they, they're finally getting it, you know, and, and they think, Hey, this, this new mid engine thing's pretty cool. I want to try it. And then the car right across the Buller Boulevard from them is, and I, I don't know how they're doing it because evidently I've done something wrong in my life, but right. you know, some like 27 year old guy, you know, guy and his, his fiance or wife, picking up their brand new C8 Corvette that looks almost identical to the one that the guy that's in his seventies is getting. That's pretty that good. Means, that says something because if good. it, if it stretches across that much of a demographic change, then I mean, you're, and, and the, the amount of the younger generation that I see picking this car up at the museum is, I mean, we didn't see that with the C7. You know, I started at the museum during the era of the C7, and I did not see this many people in, let's say, our age range and younger picking these cars up, but they're there in force to get the C8. That's awesome. I love it. I think it's I think it's a wicked, wicked piece of equipment. Yeah. Have you driven one yet? No, I need to. Uh, any of you guys driven one yet, Sean? I drove one around the block. I haven't really got to flog one yet, but I instantly was more comfortable in the C8 than I was in the seven or the six. Um, mm-hmm. The seven and the six is still, I mean, I'm, I'm still, a, I'm still in, in need of losing a few pounds, but even if I got, if, if I lost all the weight that I need to lose the, the six and the seven just don't fit me all that well, because I'm, I'm all upper body. Like I've, if I had legs, I'd be six five, six six, but I don't have any legs. Thanks, mom and dad. Um, but being all torso, when I get into a car, like half the time, if it's a low roof sports car, a lot of times I'll get in it and even without a helmet on them, like this. And the C eight, I had I had headroom, man. And it's it's just a it's a more user friendly platform all across the board. And then I mean they, they went to mid engine because they had to. They, I mean, it's mm-hmm. there. There was li- if they wanted to continue to play on a global scale in sports car racing, they had to. There was no choice. Well, they I mean, could have. Kept- yeah, I mean, she, the chief engineer Taj said it probably the best. You know, the 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 2019 ZR1 was basically the you know ringing every last ounce right. of power out of a front engine car that was feasibly possible. I mean, they, they did everything they could to that car 
to make it everything it could be and chassis still be wise. what Corvette is. You know, and, yeah, and still, chassis I mean, wise and, and right, drive wise. Yeah, I mean, yeah. drivability. I mean, they, they, I mean, you could keep going and make all kinds of horsepower out of the thing, but is it drivable on the street? It's going to make it turn better. No. It's I mean, that, not that ZR1. Right. That ZR1, I mean, it's, it's more than anyone needs on the street already. I mean, there's, the same could be said for the Z06. The Z06 is an absolute oh, monster. Yeah. And, and, and C5, 5, 6, or 7 trim, the Z06 is an absolute monster. But having said that, none of them can handle or, or go around a road course as quick as a base eighth generation. Like it's, it's, it's just – it's undeniable what the mid-engine layout does. And it's cool to hear like straight from you, you know, you're there every day seeing that and knowing that the demographic has changed so much, that just means that Corvette is is here to stay. You know, it's, it's mm-hmm. not something that we may have, like if they'd have stayed with front engine, I don't know whether we had another 10 years of Corvette. I really don't. Uh, but now it's how long, how long do you want to build them kind of thing? And I still can't believe it, Corvette. I know John and I have had this conversation. I think the four of us have had this conversation at some point. I can't believe Corvette isn't sort of its own performance brand under the GM umbrella with multiple models. Because I can still see, like, I, I, I can see the want for a front engine car in that lineup. And I think they'd still sell. And I don't think it would really take from the mid-engine sales. I, I just, I don't know. I, I could be completely wrong, but I could see Corvette being the high performance arm of GM, just like, you know, V is for Cadillac or AMG is for Mercedes or, you know, insert high performance badge here. But I, I, I'm shocked that they didn't go with a multi-model approach and actually come up with a standalone Corvette showroom format kind of thing. Who am I? It's been talked about for years because in the book, uh, All Corvettes Are Red, which the gentleman who wrote it followed the design of the C5, they tossed it around. But, you know, they, I guess they kind of did it once with the um, XLR Cadillac. <laughs> that was the retractable hardtop Corvette. That was a cool car. That was a cool car. It was a neat, it was a, it was a neat design exercise. So, what do you guys think of that new Ford Lightning? <laughs> <laughs> there it's bringing it out of the GM does world it, again. Does it does it really matter? I mean, when are you going to be able to buy one if they if they can't have the electronics for an F two hundred and fifty or an F one hundred and fifty? Are they going to be able to make a totally electric Lightning? I mean, yeah. how many how many really? chipboards does an EV need? That's the new question. I mean, wh- why? What I do, do you like how I just got that right back to a whole different brand and, and electric vehicles? Yeah, it didn't take much, did you? Did you? No, we, we commented on it. Mm-hmm. Is there such yeah. a thing as an EV Zamboni? Just because I haven't been here in a while and I don't know whether y'all we've, we've, that we've been there, just be quiet, Yoda. Yeah, 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 you need to listen to the episodes. The Zamboni stuff was retired, mm. just got brought back. We, we, we hung the Zam- we hung we hung the Zamboni's jersey in the rafters. Uh, it's retired. It's over. Can't even no, talk about it anymore. There's always room for Zamboni Simulator. Derek's favorite game. That came up in conversation with somebody the other day. Unfortunately, I but Will's point's very valid. You know, Tesla's finally getting affected by uh, the only company that's not affected by this chip shortage is Apple. But they have, you know, their chips are custom built. And their their M1 chip is, you know, very proprietary for them. I think everybody else in the world's universal. But I heard rumors. I haven't confirmed that if you go out and you buy a new Chrysler product right now, and what's the other brand? They are. Only, I can't remember. They're only giving you one key with it because they don't have enough microchips to provide two keys. And, and if, I, I don't see how we get to this this level. Is 
there's plenty of sand in the world. I do understand it's a specific sand, but uh, how do we get here? I mean, I mean, is I, it all is it all a derivative of COVID? The, I'm a lot of it is, I think. I'm well, kind. I, of, I mean, yeah, you got to remember, factories had to shut down because of COVID. They weren't people weren't going in and making these things. Supply chains have been interrupted. I mean, it's it's a lot of factors. I mean, it's the problem. The problem is, is we put computers in cars. If we'd go back to not having computers in cars and, you know, we'd be doing better. But the, the robots to build those non computerized cars wouldn't work. I, I think it's just more of an excuse than anything. I mean, just get the crap. Make it. You can make a whole car, but you can't make a chip. I mean, come on, guys. Get, I mean, really? And Okay, but here, here's, here's the thing, too. Like, let's just look at this situation and think about it. And now, you know, we're building all these cars with, you know, computers and chips and all this stuff in them. And I, I, I have this conversation regularly, and I think we've probably even had it on the show in the past. But... For those of us that collect cars or are involved in the museum world with cars, 10, 15 years, 20 years from now, whenever it is, your computer chips go bad in one of the cars in your collection, and they're only producing computer chips for the current model electric vehicles that are coming out, and nobody's making the uh, you know computer chips for a 2020 C8 Corvette or a, you know, whatever it be, what are you going to do? Well, I don't, you're not going to have used, you're not going to have used cars anymore because they're not going to run. I don't even understand what this chip thing is. Well, I mean, see, there's, there's I, these I little heard. things called computer chips. They're very, very small. I know. And what they go is. in and it takes a computer chip to run your car. I, yeah. I totally understand that, but you can get in there with with a laptop, plug up to it, and change the ECM however you want it. I mean, you open up an ECM, there's I don't see chips. You know, it's it's more like a hard drive. Right, but they're all in embedded in that, and if they're not there, it doesn't run. I, I just I think it's ludicrous. I mean, we've got a we've got a car in the shop right now that it's an old car. 364 that's got four or five computers in it that we program to run whatever we want to run, uh, like a programmable body control module, an ECU that runs the whole engine transmission, you know, one that runs the gauges. I mean, at Big Oak Garage, we're not having a problem with chips. No. I mean, each one, each one of those things that you're programming with the laptop is built from chips, I, and, I, I and you and, and you have those. But we, the for some reason, the key chips that we need to make computers and cell phones and cars and refrigerators and have all dried up. But right, so here, yeah, I, well, you know, before the show, I'm looking for memory for my new computer, and there's billions and billions and billions of it, it seems. And you can buy a processor for your computer. If you want to build your own. Hey, I got a chip right here. What's it worth? <laughs> well, I mean, what it, what it's not, as, not as much as a sheet of plywood. <laughs> well, I've got some of that too. I'll give you three doge coin for it. But, but here's the thing, Will, the, the thing is like some of these things are just, they were stocked up. So the computers, the, the ECUs, things that you got for that car, they're probably, they were in stock. They've been sitting on a shelf waiting. Now give it another year or so, or maybe even six months. And after other hot rod shops, buy up all the stock of those, see if you're going to be able to get them for the next project. Cause you're probably not going to be able to, because the company is not going to be able to make them. Wow. Just make the damn thing. Whoever, whoever makes the chips can't make the chips, but I mean, it's, it's across the board, and I'm kind of in Will's boat a little bit. I'm tired of the COVID excuse. Um, I mean, 
I don't want to get too political, but unemployment in Alabama is like 3.2%, which is extremely low. So it's not that people aren't going back to work. We always run 3% unemployment. It's the people are there. The laborers are there. Derek's got a valid point that the supply chains are there, but just because one you know boat decides to draw a penis in the ocean and then gets stuck in a canal, it um, th- wow. that, that shouldn't affect the whole wow. world. <laughs> wow, you really took that somewhere, didn't you? Well, that's actually Ooh. somehow something tells me that was intentional because he actually did that. If you go and watch his GPS coordinates, and then he entered the canal and somehow decided to parallel park and block all lanes of traffic. And yeah, that backed up everything for a while, but don't we catch up at some point or are we going to be behind for 20 years because we can't get these boats unloaded? It was Uh, a perfect storm of, of so many things that led up to it though. And then there was a, uh, there was a fire in one of the Japanese chip factories a large scale factory. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, like a tens of billions of dollar factory that had a large fire. And the company that, that had that fire, if I remember correctly, accounts for somewhere between 25 and 35 percent of the global production for this for the chips that we are short on right now. And then you've got 5G manufacturing for 5G products that exploded you've got i know you don't want to talk about it but covid did play a role in the initial shortage and then you had the fire and then you had 5g and then it's it's just like this layer on layer on layer of absolute crap storm that's that's right. caused it so here here's 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 my uh rebuttal to that what happened in the early 40s in the United States. We had a war. You know what? That, that wasn't in the United States. Well, that was never <laughs> in Europe. And... We were in war. so. Oh, okay. There. We were drug right. into it. Right. We were drug into it. You know, all of our manufacturing facilities in the United States, what do they start doing? Hey, let's help out with this deal. I mean, that's probably not really what they wanted to do. But you know what? They transitioned into helping with the war overnight. And the next thing you know, man, we're dominating. So, okay, why can't somebody just go, you know what? We need chips. Hey, you make chips. Because you need chips to make the things that make chips. (laughs) But you also, (laughs) you you have to dig deeper into that, Will, because you have to look at the manu- what the manufacturing facilities were that started turning out things for the war. So it wasn't just, hey, we need tanks. You start building tanks. We need this. You start building this. It was, hey, we need helmets for the war, for our, our growing number of soldiers going to war. What tool and die do we already have that could be slightly modified without a lot of work to make those? Well, guess what? Hubcaps are a lot like a helmet. So they converted the machines that built hubcaps into helmet manufacturing facilities. And it's not just, you don't go to the company that makes, um, you know, uh, stretch Armstrong dolls and go, Hey, you're going to make computer chips tomorrow. Cause they don't have the equipment or the facility to do it. We can make anything in the United States. Anything. That's actually, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm actually not going to answer that. Cause it'd get me in trouble. I, and, and actually the, the stretch Armstrong company, how they deal with plastic. What's in a chip, bunch of plastic, a little bit of copper, some memory, things here and there it's a it's a lot deeper than that though i mean we're we're talking about we're talking about manufacturing facilities that are basically it's it's a tens of billions of dollar manufacturing facility that is in and of itself an entire clean room that sucks out particles down to the micron level we're talking about something this small Right here. Hey, Will, wait a sec. Wait a sec, Will. 
Will, Will, you're you're a production facility. You make you build hot rods. Yeah. You use you use plastic. You use metal. You yeah. use you you got sand laying around. I'm sure for your sandblaster. Yeah. Uh, why don't you, why don't you start making microchips tomorrow? Hey, if if I, if I could figure it out, I would. Well, that figure it out. That's what you're saying. You that we should do. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm all for it. There's obviously a need for it. If you can figure it out in a hurry, you, I mean. But the thing about it, there's a lot of smart people in the world that, in the United States, that know how to manufacture a microchip. And, hey, if that guy wants to walk into my shop and show me how to start making micro trip chips, let's do it. You know, I mean, it's it's almost that that situation where where there's a will, there's a way, and it. I mean, I it's just an excuse to me. I mean, it, this is this is the United States of America. We're the most powerful country on the planet. I think I went away. That yeah, maybe not. And, and 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 we can't make a microchip. No, let's be honest, we can't. I've been saying for decades that I'm fearful when we ever go to war because we don't make a damn thing over here. Yeah, we can build a Hummer, but we don't make the microchips and the computers to make the Hummer move. You know, we can shape the metal and everything, but we don't have the facilities here to do that. They're in another country. Hopefully we don't go to a war against that country. And I think this is proving you know, proving everything. We ran out of toilet paper. How hard is it to make toilet paper? Like you say, um, you know, and my part-time thing with cigars, the cigar industry is still behind and, you know, it's agricultural products and you got to grow things and age things. And it's about time, but I keep getting COVID excuses. And, you know, for some reason we went into COVID, everything stopped. And then at some point everybody said, It stopped Every, just like that. Everything stopped. It's magical. Even John, just even it John's stopped. camera. Yeah, just like that. Just boom. Yeah. I can't. Everything figure. stopped. <laughs> oh, is he gone again? Yep, he's yeah, gone. yeah. Yeah. The, the, see, now it's really Brady Bunch when he just freezes <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> you don't know. You don't. You don't realize that it's that's happening when it does. Well, this is why we're test streaming tonight, everybody. And we went way too political. I was going to say, this one's really gone off the rails tonight. And John's just... There he is. He's back. Hey, John. How's it going? Yay! Hey, I, I, I don't know if you can hear me, but I've got an 862 download and a 39.94 upload. So, and I'm on your microchip. Can I, can I ask a question? What does any of that mean? And I'm only using um, 59% of my computer memory. So it means that it shouldn't be happening is what that means. Ah, yeah. (laughs) And yet, yet there it it is. is. So John, we're we're talking about microchips and we'll solving the problem. So, you know, the conspiracy things don't want us to do this. We all had our vaccinations. Bill Gates is hearing us and we're, we need to, he wants to shut us up. Oh yeah. That's where all the microchips went in our arms. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my. Oh my. So, so John, how's the, uh, how's the uh, mini truck world? Um, there was, well, we're hoping that we do get a mini truck from Ford in the very near future. Um, Isn't that the Ranger? No, it's not called the Ranger. The Ranger is a smaller truck. The mini truck is going to be called the Maverick because Ford has a long history oh, with small yeah, pickups named the Maverick. Uh. <laughs> you know, not the Ranchero, <laughs> but the Maverick. <laughs> I think that one's worse than the mach I mm-hmm. really do. It is. It is. But I guess I say maybe it's politically incorrect to call it Ranchero, but I think that would be just as politically incorrect as Maverick. Yeah. 
I so we do have we do have hopes from Ford. It's not going to be a cut down. Transit I mean, they yet. even but they they even could have like, I mean they they never built a Ranchero body or a Ranchero uh, um, model in the Maverick. You could even have called it the. You could have brought back the Falcon name because mm-hmm. there was a Falcon Ranchero. You could have brought back the. Um, I'm blanking. And the, after the Ranchero, when they got into the 70s, it was on the. Um, mm, it Curry. was on like. No, it, no, no, no. It was on like the. Oh, why am I blank? It was like the the sedan. Um, oh, was it the. Like one of the LTDs or something. It, it was the. Oh, what did they do? And now I'm, I'm gone. But anyway. They could have named it after one of the versions of the Ranchero, even if they didn't want to use the Ranchero. Called the Falcon. There was a Falcon well, Ranchero. Like I said, they did have the Ford Courier for many years. That's a, I yeah. I we've I think we've touched on this before. Maverick is a dumb name. Whoever is in HR at Ford needs to figure out some criteria when you're hiring people for the names department, because whoever you've been hiring, they're idiots. They're already using Falcon for the U over in Australia. So I, how hard would it be to just bring it over here? Oh, did they, so did they, they're they, that works. Cause just like two years ago, they stopped Falcon production of the sedan, but they kept, so they've kept the Ute as a Falcon. I, I think so. Either that or, or I mean, it, I know that the Ute was a Falcon when it was in production. Maybe they killed okay. it, but I know. I think, it. no, I think they killed everything like a year or two ago on that. Cause I, I saw that and I was like, man, how can I, how can I import one of those just to have it? And I didn't do anything about wait, it. Wait, wait 20, what is it? 23 years, 24 years, something like that. Well, unless years. you have connections and then you hide it and so on and so forth. Oh, do that. It's just got to come over in one of those container ships. And right, <laughs> I know how you get it over here. You hide it in a container ship from Japan, full of, micro, full of microchips. You bury it in microchips, and you have it delivered to Will's shop. Hell yeah! Send me the raw materials to make microchips. You know, and then Will. And we'll we'll reverse the engineers the microchips and hot rods the Falcon Ute at the same time, simultaneously. It's a plan. Did we solve the world's problems? Yeah. We're definitely helping. Definitely helping. <laughs> How could we not? Yeah, stop, stop getting your container ship stuck in the canal sideways. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Dear sweet Lord. It's good to be back, y'all. <laughs> I'm really curious if we're going to gain viewers or lose viewers at this point. It's a wash. Yeah, it's kind of like trading in your car. You know, it's, it's worth a little more, but you, you got to pay a little more on the other end. Oh, that's that's well, wonderful. I'm going to I'm going to end it here before. <laughs> Maybe we should end this one, start again, and this is the after show party because something tells me, unless we're, anybody's running to, off to do work, which is probably Will and Derek, I don't know what Sean does for a living anymore. Oh, which which reminds me, you had Derek brought up something earlier about restoring cars that are ten years old and microchips, and Will went down that tangent. Sean brought something up on Facebook this week that he overheard in a shop that related to that. What I don't even remember what it was. I don't remember the yesterday. Technician that said it's 12 years old, we can't work on it. Yeah, that was mind blowing, man. <laughs> that was absolutely my I'd never heard a shop say that before. And then evidently it's a thing. Like I have friends who own shops and they chimed in and they were like, Yeah, it's it's a it's a liability issue. It's a, you know, we, we get a 150,000 mile, 180,000 mile, 10 year old, 12 year old, 14 year old vehicle that comes in. And especially it, it seems to be more uh, 
actual like like Ford dealer, Chevy dealer, Mercedes dealer type thing, not necessarily the the third party shop. But a lot of folks chimed in and they were like the the actual dealers for the OEs don't want to touch the older cars at all. Well, but and it, this it's, shop- it's it's even worse than that because not only are they not touching the older cars, the 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 tier one automotive manufacturers, Chevrolet, yeah, the the big guys, the the yeah. the, the ones you're talking about. If you take even a new car in, the only things they're allowed to do are plug it into the computer, and what the computer tells is says is wrong. That's what they fix. The technicians can't use common diagnostic knowledge. Yeah, I had an issue with my Silverado. Took it into a Chevy dealership. They called me back. They're like, "Well, you got a dead cell in the battery." I'm like, "Got no, that? That's not what it is." Like, I I know that's not what it is because it will start every now and then and not start other times. And you can hear the solenoid click in the starter. That tells you it's something beyond the solenoid, like a faulty starter. Just, you know, common kind of diagnostic process, right? But the computer computer, doesn't say that. the, The computer says it's a dead cell in the battery. We have to replace it. So they replace the battery and then keep it at the dealership and keep going out about every half hour to start it, shut it off. And like the fourth or fifth time they went out and wouldn't start. So they brought it back in, ran more tests and found with the good or with, you know, not I shouldn't say with a good battery, but they just went further in the testing and found out it was a faulty starter. So they replaced the starter. You guys could have saved how many hours of your technician's time and the cost of the battery going in and out of my truck and just replace the starter by common diagnostics. Like, does okay. That, does that diagnostic time then get passed off to uh, – is, is like if it's under warranty, that gets passed back to the manufacturer. If it was yours, that like if it was out of warranty – you'd have to pay for that extra diagnostic time, even though common sense tells that technician just replace the starter. But you're, well, you, now you're going to have to well, pay I for think it depends. I, it, I think it depends on who you are because if it was not under warranty and it was me, I wouldn't be paying because I'd stand there and say, mm, no, you messed up. You're eating it. So is it, honestly, is it really that's what they have to do? I think people are, are are they just not really mechanics anymore? Because no, I, I, I've asked a number and and you got to remember my dad worked in dealerships for years and he's gone back and asked his, the guys he knows. And it is that it is coming down from the top that you can, it's liability. You cannot do anything beyond what the equipment says, because if you do and it's wrong, they can sue us. Yeah, they literally, this dealership, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but the gist of what they said was our diagnostic equipment will not work on a 12 year old vehicle. And I, I just can't believe that that's true. Like Chevrolet at their dealerships, according to this dealer, doesn't have a diagnostic tool that they could plug into a 12 year old. 2009 model, 2009? Yes, 2009 model ECU and pull codes. There's no way that's true. I'll, I'll tell There's you, no way that's true. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something that's pretty quick. I know John's ready to roll. Um, in, the, in, in the neighboring town that I live in, there's a couple of dealerships that are across the street from each other owned by the same you know, parent company, two different, you know, brand new car dealerships. They have to share a scanner, a singular scanner, one, one scanner that they have. How many texts? I I don't know how many texts, but I mean, these are full blown new dealerships and they, they share a scanner back and forth because they don't want to pay 
each each one they don't want to have to pay for each shop to have a scanner and have the updates and everything else. I mean, I wonder what that uh, I wonder what that yearly subscription is for the updates and all the TSBs and all that good stuff it's, these it's, days. It's fifteen hundred bucks, two grand. That's all it is. Yeah. I figure. I mean, a, a manufacturer scanner is what ten grand. This, this is this is a this is not a manufacturer scanner. It, it is an aftermarket scanner. Okay. Um, like a Mac or something like that. You know. Um, but yeah, they they share they share a scanner. So that just tells you what these new car dealerships are wanting to do. Let me go ahead and tie it all together, Will. They share a scanner because there's not enough microchips to build more. That's no, this, this was I was I was I was told this before the whole microchip shortage. It's called a uh, bean counter being a a hole. That's unbelievable. It is what it is. So anyway, craziness. Are are you happy with that? All, right. Wrap it up, John. all right, John. Do you want to wrap this up? No, I, I, I you're itching at the you're you're chomping at the bit here. You're, no, I just don't know when I can talk anymore because according to all my things, I you guys should hear me all the time. It's all of your connections that are bad. Um I don't no. know if I'd call our connections bad, but maybe they're planned to be bad. Well, oh, I was gonna say there is Oh, what's I that, John? You locked up. I'm sorry. What? No. <laughs> I know there is a certain European manufacturer that to buy their scanner is in the upper five figures and the updates is in the mid five figures yearly. So it's not cheap. And then that that's if you're not a dealer affiliate or something, because I believe they end up washing it when you're a dealer. I think the dealer writes a check and somehow you get it in kickbacks, but it's, I, I I don't know. That's why many years ago we went to le- everybody went to pushing leases on cars. You get the car for three years. The manufacturer decides if it's got three or four more years in it. If it doesn't, it gets scrapped. If it does, they sell it or release it. And you know, look at how many not are cars are on the market that are more than seven or eight years old. There there are a few, but there's they sell a lot of them, and there's sure not a lot of them available. So they're disposable items now. Cars right. are dis- everything on this planet is disposable, even though we don't have anywhere to really put them. <laughs> like space. We- why do you think we're Why do you think we're trying to figure out how to get to Mars? It's yeah. not to colonize it; it's to put junkyards there. Pick so, a part, we'll be on Mars. <laughs> Elon put his Tesla on the rocket to test the jettisoning of worn out six year old vehicles Mm -hmm. from the planet's surface. That's perfect, man. All I can say is like 50, 60 years from now or so, like uh, our kids or our grandkids, whenever it is, that is going to be the most epic college road trip. Like, Hey guys, we need, we need some parts for the Tesla. Let's let's, you guys want to go, uh, uh, junkyard hop out at Mars. Come on, let's go. Like friggin' a man, this gonna be sweet. I, I found a Model Three performance engine on the third ring of Saturn. Yes. <laughs> Good lord. Marketplace go, is gonna be insane on Facebook. We gotta go through the wormhole at the black hole EQ twenty three. It's about fourteen light years away. We're gonna take a left at planet argon and guess, are you freaking kidding me yeah I just, hey if e- elon really doesn't want us to go back to mars per se he just wants to go home i think that's <laughs> what it is <clears throat> there's where all the microchips are <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. underground we're, we're, we're figuring this out but we better end it here before bill gates uh, activates our self-destruct immunization trackers I hear black helicopters in Harpersville. We're in trouble. You shouldn't hear the black helicopters. They're I hear quiet. It. Oh, They're I hear silent. It. The the problem yeah. is, see, I can't I can't say that here because almost every day a black hawk or two <laughs> fly over my house because I live that close to Fort Campbell. And so I have almost every day a black hawk goes by. 
And every once in a while, maybe every twice a month or so, we get some Chinooks going over. Uh, so actually, we had a really cool incident with one of the Blackhawks just a couple weeks ago. Evidently, they use them uh, for looking for drug fields and uh, with the thermal scanning. And man, he must have picked up on something on the field like across just down the street from the house. He came in and I mean, he couldn't have been 50 feet off the ground looking for something and it was like whoa it was it was sweet either that or they were tracking something i did i don't know a rabbit they were looking they were he's trying to use the the gatlin gun to hunt rabbits well that's it everybody we're out of here microchip thank you for listening and remember to look us up at nodriginggloves.com There you can find back episodes, links to products we recommend, and links to all of our social media. Be sure to tell a friend about us. No Driving Gloves is edited and produced by J. Lewis Productions. 